are these people? Ricky, my buddy over at Council of State Media, put this one out the other day, and it, <laughs> it fucking triggered me. Welcome to the stage of capitalism where we charge sick people to rent wheelchairs in a hospital. In a hospital. Ricky starts out and says, now my, um, now my American friends are probably wondering what the big deal is here. <laughs> Most of them don't even have health care. If they get sick, they're supposed to die quietly at the side of the road, but we in the UK are not quite so far gone. We're rapidly heading in that direction, though. Thank you, Nigel Farage. The NHS is about as safe in the hands of West Streeting as a hamster is in the coils of a hungry python, or in the hands of Richard Gere. Anybody know who that is? Am I too old for that? Richard Gere? Yeah. Um, he was got seduced by Mrs. Robinson? No, that, and, no that's Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman? Well, who am I thinking of? No, Richard Gere was the one mm. that had the hamster up the butt. Anyway, Lemmy Wakes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Famously. Allegedly. He denies it. Anyway, the what fundamental... Was he, what, what was he in? A hamster up the butt is what people who are in wheelchairs in the UK feel like. Oh, he was in Pretty Woman. Pretty Woman. Yep. Yeah, he was in, American he was in, Gigolo. He was also in uh, the Runaway one with... Bride, Officer Ed, and a Gentleman. Edward Norton. He played the lawyer. Primal Fear. Oh, Unfaithful. he was so he was Primal so good Fear. in Primal Fear, and he was in one Chicago. with Chicago. He was in an infuriating movie where he, uh, with with uh, that was that was pathetic. The Shall We Dance movie, but I'm sure it made him a ton of money. Anyway, I didn't want to talk about Richard Gere. I want to talk about wheelchairs. Mm. The fundamental idea of the NHS is that it's free at the point of use. That you're not denied health care because you can't afford to pay. Well. It seems that the inability to walk no longer counts as health, and helping people walk no longer counts as health care. Oh. Your legs are considered luxury items, just like your teeth. Clearly, because British dentistry is terrible. If you don't want to be an immobile, <laughs> toothless loser, pull yourself up by your bootstraps or something. The latest horror story to emerge is that King's College Hospital in London has decided it would be a brilliant idea to charge people for the use of wheelchairs. The story was originally broken by Jim Watterson's new substack called London Centric. If you're confused by this headline, scroll halfway down the page. And there is the original tweet that I grabbed the photo from. People arriving at the hospital and unable to walk to A&E are pointed towards a dock, a hiring dock, Full of wheelchairs and unlocked by a credit card machine. God, it looks like the fucking thing at the airport, uh, right? Like, like the the you, your luggage carrier. No, it looks like those fucking scooter things around it's a the human, fucking like. It's a human luggage carrier. Oh, uh, how about new? You crazy Dutch bastard. King's College Hospital points out that the wheelchairs are free to use for the first four hours, but if anything. This makes things worse because the hospital has among the longest waiting times in the country with patients regularly being left for more than 12 hours. If a broke and vulnerable person needs a wheelchair, they're forced to provide their car details to a company called Wheelshare. Wheelchair, Wheelshare, okay. how clever. Yeah. The patient. Timeshare. The wheel. The, right, Timeshare well, they, for wheelchairs. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Thank you, Keir Starmer, by the way. This is also why uh, Starmer sucks. He really, really sucks. Starmer sucks. He really, really sucks. The patient uh, might hope they'll be in and out of the hospital, but when their stay lasts much longer than four hours, they'll have no choice but to pay. And the charge is two pounds an hour, and while that might not seem like a lot to some... I've been one of the people for who two pounds is the difference between eating and starving. The hospital could be forcing sick and injured people to go hungry while they're recovering. Uh -huh. Patients are being hit with a double whammy because they can't call an ambulance because the waiting times are so long. 
The whole point of an ambulance service is it's supposed to be an emergency service, but ours is unable to respond to actual emergencies in many parts of the country. That's how bad things are. Yeah. What, what, what was that from? Hmm. Call the damn ambulance. Call the damn ambulance. I, I wish I do, bro. If you, you have know? an emergency, you'd better I'm hope you have a... Fallen and I can't get up. Well, you better hope that you have a friend who can give you a lift. <laughs> otherwise, you'll be paying... For, <laughs> otherwise, you'll be paying for a cab or lying in the street. Yep. If you can't pay for a wheelchair <laughs> when you get to hospital... You'll have to crawl like Rambo or hope a good Samaritan will give you a carry. If you smear blood <laughs> on the floor, I guess you're expected to clean it up or pay a cleaning bill. Isn't our healthcare service yeah. brilliant? Universal healthcare. Remember, this is where people are asking for universal healthcare. The people in the UK have no choice but this. Just remember that. Mm -hmm. King's College Hospital claims it offers a refund on the wheelchair charge to patients who've had long wait time, but the patients are saying this isn't true. <laughs> so they're gaslighting the, the, the injured and disabled on top of it. Laughably, well, the hospital. About... Go ahead. You go way back in the archives to spy school. Um, we played that. That's I, also about King's College. We played that a couple of weeks ago mm. when you when you were off during the hurricane episode. Um, we put yeah. together a, a Palestine Origins playlist of INN news clips, and Spy School was one of them by Alan McLeod. McLeod. Yep. Um, McLeod. Are we at, okay? So laughably, here's the other one. The hospital's other defense is the charge stops people from stealing wheelchairs. Are, <laughs> are we expected to believe that wheelchair theft is so serious a problem that jeopardizing vulnerable people is a preferable alternative? Have you been smoking marijuana? Anyway, you shouldn't have to hand over your money to a private company and then ask for it back. That's your money. Hospital could be forcing people into unauthorized overdraft. And when you're poor, that's a death spiral. That's fees of 30, 40 pounds for the two pounds you were going to take off. And they were broke to begin with. Right. When you're needlessly charging people to rent things that are essential, needless uh, uh, things that we used to own until capitalists took them away, it's not even capitalism anymore. Forcing people to pay rents like this is feudalism. This company is not providing a service. It's leaving wheelchairs sitting there until you give them money for doing nothing but owning them. Money for nothing. Checks for free. Yep. This is another example of cost-cutting measures costing us more and harming our well-being. It somehow even gets worse. Guess where Wheelshare has directors from? Oh, I can tell you. Wheelshare, I can tell you. the company that rents out the wheelchairs, is based in Israel, meaning you can't do BDS without putting your health at risk. Thank you, Blondie. The NHS is subsidizing the genocidal settler col colony, and so are you if you need a wheelchair. Yes. Director number one, Israel Kassirer, born July 12, uh, born October 1975, all appointed on 12th of July 22. He's listed as a CEO. Also, David nice. Michael and Mayor Slater. All C-level executives, all living or registered at 21 Hamalacha, Rosh Hayin, Israel. Nice. Are you fucking... Uh, give me the... Are you fucking kidding me? That, that's, that's what I felt. When I read that, that was the are first... Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, I screamed it. Uh, 
disgustingly, <laughs> three Israeli yeah. directors are lining their pockets by exploiting our most sick and vulnerable citizens. Pay close attention to the address of their company. You'll be thrilled to hear that Rosh Hayin was built on the site of an Ottoman fort and a destroyed Palestinian village. Nice. David Miller points out on Twitter that Rosh Hayin is, of course, a settlement built on top of the historic 16th century Ottoman fort that used to exist there. Ready for this? The fort and the Palestinian village next to it was called Ras Al Ain. It was all destroyed when the Palestinians were forcibly removed in the 1920s. Yes, more than 20 years before the Nakba. Again, this didn't start October 7th or even in 1948. Now, I will point out as a Jew and as someone who has learned how to read Hebrew, I don't know how to say it, but Rosh, what is it? Rosh Hayin. And mm. Ras Al Ain. They literally Israel the fucking name. Yep. David Miller also points <laughs> out our health secretary has extensive connections to Israel. What a shock. As does the prime minister's wife. Israeli fingerprints are all over NHS privatization with one company, Palantir. Never heard of them before. Never heard them before. Gaining a $330 million NHS contract. Palantir is linked to the Israeli military and has access to all of our medical data. You okay with these fuckers <laughs> colonizing our NHS? Because I'm clearly not. Palantir also runs... This is indeed a disturbing universe. Palantir also runs the software that powers the CIA and every U.S. intelligence agency. Nothing mm. to see here. Please disperse. Oh. FBI, open up! That is a story you will not find anywhere else on independent media, unfortunately, and it is infuriating. And stories like that are why we're demonetized on INN. So please support your independent media streamers. Support Council Estate Media over on Substack. Ricky, my buddy Ricky, good good peeps. Um, ooh, that's that that's a chat from Appalachia Strong over on. Um, where's that? Uh, over on Rumble. Please support Appalachia Strong, the only exclusive content from Ground Zero, meaning like in North Carolina. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a second. Right. We need assistance with gas for volunteers missing work to travel to our area. Please like, comment, and share this comment over on. And that's not a comment. Appalachia Strong, if you're still watching, drop a comment on the video and we will definitely like and share it as well. Uh, this is in the live chat, so we can't share that. But I am putting it up on stream right now for people to see. And uh, and bless you, and, and, and we hope it all works out for you. We did an extensive deep dive into what happened last week um, on how do we miss that with Jesse and Jessica Jett. Also, if you are of means, check it out. All our channels. You've got INN Newsletter over on the Substack. And then we've got YouTube, Rumble, Kick, Twitch, Odyssey, Telegram, Twitter, Spotify. But there's multiple Spotify. There's not one Spotify channel to find all of them, unfortunately. I think there's actually an Apple Music INN channel where you can get all the old INN uh, podcasts. I think maybe even How Do We Miss That clips are there. Because the clips that I upload to my Substack actually go out as a separate podcast than the full show. So if you just want to hear them segments at a time, you can get that too. 